Hello, 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 and welcome back. Or welcome. Welcome back. See you. <laughs> hello, Hi. Laura. Long time hello. no see. I know, it's been an age. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are back with our reading sprints. We just finished um, our September 2023 drop for our Etsy shop. So if you haven't seen that already, um, you can certainly um, jump in there or check out our shop. Um, all of those products will be available tomorrow, which is Wednesday the 6th. And uh, yeah, but now we are gonna have some fun time with our book club um, because mm -hmm. we are gonna be doing reading sprints this evening. So if you're joining us for reading sprints, welcome. It is a pleasure to have you. Looks like uh, Andy jumped over as Hello. well as Kim. Hello Hi, ladies, Kim. cool gamers in the house. Hello everyone is jumping in so as you do jump in say hi let us know if you'll be reading um our book club pick this evening or if you have something else in mind maybe you have some dishes you need to do or a different book you're reading um but for september we are reading jennifer chiaverini <laughs> chiaverini's the spy mistress which is a civil war historical fiction um that we're reading here in September. Uh, but before we get into that and getting into our chat, chat, chatting, because Danny can never shut up, because <laughs> Danny, who's speaking in the third person suddenly, uh, sits around with a 17 and three month old all day. Mm -hmm. So this is my adult time. So <laughs> there might be a little chit chat. Anywho, uh, so before we jump into our reading sprints and whatnot, uh, Laura, why don't you uh, run quickly through the books that we'll be pulling for our October book club pick? Yep. Um, so October, you'll have, um, we're going to give you three weeks this time to vote, and we'll announce the winner in the discussion for The Spy and Mistress, which is the 26th. I believe it's the last Tuesday of the month. So you have until midnight the 25th to vote here on our channel in the community tab for one of these three picks. And they're all kind of spooky, gothic, creepy-ish. Um, first up, we have The Book of Speculation by Erica Swyler. That is sort of uh, set on the coast and a young man finds out, he gets a book in the mail, an old book in the mail and finds out that maybe his family is cursed, who's trying to save the life of his little sister. Then we have The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. This is the start to a series apparently now about a young lady who pretends to be a witch online and then she gets recruited to actually train young women in this like faraway house in the middle of nowhere on how to be a witch. And she seems to fall in love with someone and I don't know, but it looks like cute and like warm hearted. And our last one is a return from last year. <laughs> this is the Physic Book of Deliverance Dane by Catherine Howe. Very shiny, sorry. This is set um, in present day and also 1690s Salem, Massachusetts um, with an old family secret and a key and a diary and you know, all the good Gothic stuff. So there you go, three kind of spooky, creepy books for your October. You know how we love dual timelines. Mm-hmm, we do. <laughs> uh, welcome back, Jessica. Mm -hmm. Hello, hello. Um, yes. So, uh, like Laura said, you'll be able to pull on that until our live discussion. Um, so that'll be up on our community tab here in Double Booked Co. Space. Um, I will get that up this evening um, during our sprints. Okay. So be sure to check that out. Other than that, um, for me, I will be reading uh, our September book. Uh, I'm going to be doing it on audio because that's the, um, format that I have it in. Mm -hmm. I have already started reading it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how far along I am. Not very far. I think I'm into like chapter three or four. Uh, and so far it's a lot of information coming at me mm -hmm. and I'm trying to like, get my place as far yeah. as like the year and the 
things that are happening. So like historically I'm setting my mind like mm -hmm. to like where we are and like what's happening. But I like what I really like so far about this book is the main character is like my age. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Which is nice because yeah. I I'm really tired of reading about 20 year olds. <laughs> oh, I hear you. I know. You know what I mean? Yep. And I it's funny like you don't think of that when you're 20 because all the books are about 20 year olds or right. like, and sometimes when you read about like a 30 year old, you're like, Oh, wow. Well, like so mature. Mm -hmm. But when you're 37 years old, almost 40. And for you too, being in your forties, mm -hmm. sorry to out you there. No, sorry, I'm um, 40. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Didn't mean to you're like, nice. but no, it is my age. It's no, fine. <laughs> we're, we're here. Not that way. <laughs> uh, we're in our forties ish. You yeah. know, I'm almost there, but mm -hmm. like, it's nice to read about a mature character and mm -hmm. their thoughts and whatnot. Now, of course, she's a spinster because whatever. But like, yeah. you know, you were a spinster by the time you were 25, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I just like that I have a, I'm reading about a mature woman. Yeah, nice. I didn't know she was older. I'm really glad she is because Yeah. Same like I, you, I'm almost like a 20 year olds. No offense yeah. to 20 year olds out there, but like, yeah. at some point you want to see I, someone that's a little older, lived a little bit of life, something, you know? Yes. Um, I didn't, and obviously I am not trying to spoil anything, but I, with being an audiobook, it's harder to pick up on certain things. But at some point, she had mentioned that she was betrothed to somebody. Mm. And it had been 20 years since then. So I'm like, okay, so she's got to be like, either just 40 or a little bit older because if she is patrolled, even if she was patrolled under 20, I just figured 20, you're like going to marry someone. <laughs> mm -hmm. But so that's how I figured the age. Um, plus her mother is in her sixties. So if her mother had her when mm -hmm. she was in her twenties, then plus 20. So she's 40, mm -hmm. but correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure she is <laughs> older, okay. which okay. I really like. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's all I really have to say so far about what I'm reading. Um, like I said, I'm just trying to gather the information to understand place and setting and the um, conflict of the time. Mm -hmm. So just me knowing history in general, it's just connecting the dots. But so far, so good. I don't have any problems with it. It doesn't, you know, nothing sticks out to me other than the fact that the narrator is older, which is nice. Um, I don't really know where it's going. Like, well, obviously I know where it's going because of the title. So I'm like mm -hmm. waiting for that to happen um, <laughs> or to reveal itself. Um, but so far, so good. Yeah. Nice. Nice. What, gotcha. what will you be doing? Uh, I'll be starting that later on. But my, the first sprint I want to use to get a jump on a book I'm reading for shorty September because I'm... Mm -hmm really invested in shorty September. I don't know why I'm so into it, but I am. Um, so I've been pulling slips for each new book. So I don't feel like bored with knowing, oh, I have to read this one. I have to read this one. Even just seeing them all in a row. I kind of like, oh, I already read it. It's I'm, I'm weird with stuff like that. So I'm making little pull strips like a child and it's really working because then it's a surprise every time what book I'm going to be reading next. So I need to work on Self Portrait by Jean Tierney. So this is for if you're doing short, short September, it's for the Hoochie Daddy Shorts prompt, which is to read something like smutty or to read uh, like a gossipy celebrity biography. I love Jean Tierney. Um, and I really want to see what happens here. I've been sitting on this for not very long. I know it's early days in September, but like four days now and I can't make myself read it. So I'm going to force myself to read this for the first sprint and like get into it and finally just like crack it and get it going. Yeah. And then for a second one, I'll start reading spy mistress. So, yeah, I'll I think I remember you said well. in your, in your TBR video, um, where you had, where you showed, showed that this month mm -hmm. you said what she is, she had a pretty salacious career. Wasn't she like slept with a lot of different, like high yeah. on the back of like, um, and like JFK and stuff. Yeah. And Howard Hughes and Ali Khan. Yeah. And at 38, she found herself on a window ledge high above New York, holding her life in the balance. Like, I think her mom was pretty abusive to her, too. Like, she's part of the studio system when it was yeah. really running. So, like, it's a lot, you know. But I, I yeah. love her. 
yeah, yeah. hopefully I can get into this and break that seal on reading it <laughs> yeah. so I can pick it up and go after this. So yeah, I'll be starting here. Cool. Yeah, you had a lot of really um, interesting books mm -hmm. in there. So yeah, if anyone is uh, participating in Shorty September, definitely check out Laura's mm -hmm. latest video because she uh, nice. listed quite a few um, really good books for the uh, categories <laughs> that were for that. So um, and they're all short. So if you have mm -hmm. to just add something to your TBR, they're short. So yep. yeah, this is a little longer. This is 218 pages, but it, everything is usually pretty far under. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's everything is short, obviously. Is, are you saying that about my TBR? Cause you want to read the L butts or good butts. Is that what it's about? You know, I, I was like, <laughs> Oh my gosh, I need to read that book. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know she liked butts too. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't like butts? <laughs> I know. It makes me want to read that butt book that I got the other day. Or not the other day, but the last time I went to the zoo, we got this book about farts. Oh, oh. man. And it's so funny because it's like, it's like a legit zoological, like, society book. It talks mm -hmm. about how different animals use farts <laughs> 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 to, like, live and stuff, like manatees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I read the one about manatees. So they fart <laughs> to swim. That's how they swim. Oh, and by they, farting. Like they fart. It's propelling. <laughs> and it propels them hard. Yeah. No wonder they're so slow. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a really fun book. But yeah, mm -hmm. no, I'm, uh, yeah, I, I think butts and farts are funny. So mm -hmm. I'm like Jean from Bob's Burgers. Mm -hmm. It's just, mm -hmm. I can't help it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. Let's see what everyone else is doing here. Yeah. Looks like Andy will be reading and listening since she found it on Hoopla. That's awesome. where I am also going to be reading it um, from. And I've been doing a lot of shorty books so far. Yeah. I did not get the zine or match prompts, though. Well, that's okay. You can still participate pretty easily, I think. And Jessica will also be picking up the Spy Mistress. Very nice. And you read so fast, you'll probably have it done in two days, and I'll see your review up on Instagram. Be so nice. I hope your girls are doing well. Mm -hmm. Little angels. Okay. Well, we're about 12 minutes in. I think that we should be super amazing and get a sprint in here before I start another tangent on anything. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, but let's go ahead and read. Uh, it seems like 25 minutes has been the golden ticket. So let's go ahead and stick with that. I'm going to try to find a somewhat rural setting for a ASMR. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can find like a Civil War one. But maybe since this know. is taking place in Virginia, which is the South, mm -hmm. I will try to find something... Gone with the windish. All right. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'll be able to find anything, but I'll find yeah. something good. Um, as per usual, Laura and I will mute ourselves so you don't have to hear any weird sounds coming from us. Um, but until uh, it looks like we have 25, so 10 after, right? Okay. Yeah, Maybe 10 yeah. after, we will see you then. Good luck with your reading or anything that you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and we look forward to hearing how it goes when we come back. Mm -hmm.
okie doke. That was a quick 25 minutes. Yeah, that was. Wow. I know. How's the book going? Pretty good. I'm at uh, 17%. Nice. I feel like if anyone's reading this who doesn't really like history, I think they would DNF it. Because mm. it's it's a lot of, like, this person arrived in town, and this person arrived in town, and this soldier this thing, and, that, and so it's, like, a lot of just, like, why are you telling me all of this stuff? But, like, for me, who likes history and just likes trying to figure out, like, the time and place. And I've not ever read a Civil War piece with people in the South in this, in, you, know, you know, like, this, they're unioners or, I guess, kind of, but in the South. It's interesting. But mm -hmm. I could see how this could, like, not, like, people could be like, oh, this is, like, what is, what is this book even going to be about? Because yeah. like I said, I'm 17% in and I don't really feel like anything's happening yet. Mm. But I'm, it's fine. I'm enjoying mm. it. It's all good. I'm getting distracted. Like I'm working on like our Etsy stuff. So mm. like every once in a while I have to be like, oh, I have to listen to the book. <laughs> like, oh, pay attention. <laughs> yeah, pay attention. Yeah. So. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Andy made it to 7%. Nice. How are you feeling about it so far, Andy? I know 7% is not like a huge chunk of the book as far as being yeah. able to be like, this is what I think. Mm -hmm. But first impressions? Yeah. Hi, Jenna. Well, hi, Jenna. Long time no see. Gone with the wind. Um. So I've not read Gone with the wind. Yeah, me either. So. I've never seen the movie all the way through. That's they're in the South, but they're also Southerners. Mm -hmm. This book, the main character and her family are in the South, but they don't agree with the South. Mm -hmm. Like they're, they don't agree with the South's um, like trajectory. Mm -hmm. So yeah, see, I could see how people, mm -hmm. I feel like it's too much information. Hmm. Like, it's a lot. It's a lot. Like, nothing's really happening with our characters as far as, like, relatable-wise. It's kind of just like, oh, and this happened, and then this happened, and this person, and then this person, and then this person. It's like, do any of these people matter? Like, do we need to know about all these people <laughs> that are coming? But, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Hello. Angie, hi. Oh, it's so nice to see you. Hi. How are you, Angie? I see you changed your name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How's it going? Didn't you recently move? How did that go? Oh, yeah, that's right. Were you able to sell all your books? Which was so sad, by the way. Like, I, I mean, good for you. Like, if you have to get rid of yeah. stuff, that's awesome. <laughs> but, like, I was like, oh, my gosh. When I move, I just move all of my books. <laughs> but I hope that went well. If, and, and if you're still mm -hmm. in the midst of it, um, I hope that's going well. But mm -hmm. no worries. We're glad you're here to reading with us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's okay. I'm kind of in the same place. Summer. Yeah. I've only been reading the, the book club books, so mm -hmm. don't. Don't worry about it. I have not been motivated to do much yeah. reading. So I've been watching a lot of TV. Like <laughs> I probably have watched more TV now than I have watched since I was like a teenager mm -hmm. because I'm so exhausted that all I do when I can sit down and not do anything is just stare at the TV. <laughs> But I've been watching some pretty good stuff. I think I mentioned mm -hmm. in a previous, maybe our live discussion, that I was going to look into watching the Sex and the City reboot, which I did watch the first season. I thought they did a nice job. Mm -hmm. I'm in season two now, so that's fun. Um, and then for shows that are from books, I was able to watch the 
three seasons of Discovery of Witches, which mm-hmm. I think did a really good job and is really making me want to reread that series. <laughs> so that's probably coming down the pike for me. And for those of you, another bookish thing, those of you who like Virgin River, mm-hmm. that starts in two days, yeah. one day, if you don't count today. Mm-hmm. Very excited for that. Yep. Laura and I will probably be watching at the same time, texting each other every five seconds, going, oh, my God, oh, my yeah. God, oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> That's what we like to do. Mm-hmm. Virgin River and Bridgerton. Yep. And it used to be Witcher, but we don't do that anymore because we're yeah. so hard. <laughs> I know. But Virgin River and Bridgerton gets mm-hmm. watched, like, within a day or two of them. Mm-hmm launching which is hilarious because then we have to wait like an entire year or more no. and it's like we literally get it done in like 20 hours mm-hmm. yeah usually <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> so ridiculous so ridiculous but i'm excited for virgin river i'm mm-hmm. really hoping this is the season where charmaine gets hit by a bus i know but i know I'm really tired of her, Mm -hmm. but I'm really happy, and I won't say what it is in case anyone hasn't seen it, but I'm really happy that something was said. Yes, finally admitted. Mm -hmm. Because I knew it. I Mm -hmm. freaking knew it. Ugh. Mm Mm-hmm. Wish you could have this. But anywho, I don't, and I know I talked to you about this last time, like, for Virgin River, it's it's getting really dramatic. Yeah, I like ridiculous. I get with that. Like I'm just I'm over mm-hmm. it. Like I don't I don't want it to be this dramatic. Like, can we just have a show that we can watch and enjoy? And like dramatic things happen, but they're not like just happening all the time. Yeah. So like, I'm have not a really com- pleased with the end of that show. This last season. I don't even know what season we're in. But hopefully it gets sussed out and it's for the good and not the bad. Because like you said, since you have read the books, it's not really following the books very closely. No, not really. And I I have been trying to read some series books this year. Again, I'm not really reading that much for lots of reasons. But especially this summer, I just really didn't read. Um, however, like this shelf right next to me, not this one, but the one you can't really see. This one is my series shelf. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, Virgin River's still on here. I should really work on those. And I had six books left and there were six months at the end of this year. I was like, good, I'll read one book a month. So then I'll finish it by the end of the year, right? (laughs) I didn't read July, didn't read August. So I'll catch up and read them fast. I can read them in like a day or two, it's fine. Um, So I'm almost caught up. I'm on book like 15 or 16. And it sort of follows the show, but not really. Like, they're compressing some things together, and they're making new characters out of, like, two or three characters. Um, The stuff with uh, Brie and whoever she marries in the books, uh, is within the books, is not who she's with in the show. And that's irritating me, because I want her to be with the person, like, in the show that she has in the books, because I like them as a couple, and... There's lots of little stuff that doesn't quite go. So, yeah, it's doing its own thing. Like, I think after the second season, it was pretty dramatically taking turns away from the series. Do you think for people who haven't read the series, do you think it's worth reading if they've already seen the show? Um, yeah, because I think it's different enough. Um, however, I will say, and this is not a thing that bothered me before, but after reading in all these books, it now bothers me. But if you're not okay with, like, miraculous pregnancies happening almost literally every single book, don't read it. Because almost every woman who comes there, like, has some kind of problem and she's been told she can't have kids or, like, she thinks, like, medically, literally, she, she knows she can't have kids. Or, like, someone tried for a long time and it didn't happen and then, like, she finds the right man in Virgin River and then, bam, like, she drinks a cup of water and she's pregnant, like, magically. And after the third time, I was like, oh, okay this is you got to cool it like this is and it happens almost every single book so if that's something that would annoy you (laughs) i would say just we'll know that going in um 
but they're like they're really like nice books you get to know a, a different couple of course each time but you still check in with all the people in the town and i like that in series when you get everyone's still involved and like the same things happen annually every year and so i mean i do like it it's pretty clean i mean characters do have sex but i don't think it's fairly steamy I mean, I'm not a good judge because I, I read a lot of smut and nothing really faces me. But I don't remember anything being like particularly egregious. It's more like romantic love. It's always in a serious relationship. Like, um, so it's not that steamy. You know, I, give it a shot. Certainly, hmm. you know, it's it's worth cool. checking out. I think. Well, thank you. Like I said, very fast reads too. So. Yeah. Yeah, I keep thinking about reading it, and then I'm like, I don't know if I want to dedicate that much time. Yeah. I really feel like there's, like, a cap on series. Like, for mm -hmm. me, it it's, like, three or four books, and then I'm like, you really can't have many more than that. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. But uh, looks like, yep, yeah, in Mexico, so wow. 312 books. Well... Best of luck to you. Anyone wants to know, put your handle up, Angie, and if anyone's looking yeah. for some books, um, we'll direct them to your store. Uh, Jenna. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So Hulu's flipping shows. How flip shows. There yeah, was a week that I was, like, just obsessed watching these <laughs> flipping shows. I watched um, these ones where they're in Florida, and they're, like, supposedly competing with one another but they're really not it's more just like bragging rights but that one was crazy because they're flipping these homes that they're buying on auction and i can't remember what it was called um but they're like spending a ton of money like like 200 some odd thousand dollars just for the house sight unseen like oh they couldn't go in or anything and then they'd go in and they would flip it for like another so much money. And then they would sell it for like a ton of money. I'm like, who is buying these houses? Like, yeah, it's crazy. And then I watched this one called 50 50 Flip. That one was really interesting because it was like that one was way more like realistic. Then I started watching this one called Gut Job. That one was kind of cool. I didn't really finish that one because. It was starting to get too, like, scripty feeling to me. Mm -hmm. And, like, certain things were going, like, more than one episode. And I don't really like that. Like, I want to see everything in one episode. Um, but, yeah I, I, yeah, I was, like, all up in the Flipping Houses shows. I don't know why. I just get into these little things where I'm, like, I want to watch this. And then I end up watching, like, 75 of them. Mm -hmm. um, but, yes, Discovery of Witches, uh, I liked it. I definitely think with having Deborah Harkness as one of the producers, they definitely tried to keep it close to the books. There's obviously a lot of stuff that wasn't, especially because the books are like 600 pages a piece yeah. and to get that all into one season. Um, the one thing I will say that I think the show did a poor job of doing is I feel like, and I, I feel the same way about this with The Witcher, I feel like if you didn't read the books, you can get kind of lost as far as like timing and stuff because the books obviously have way more information but the show kind of just keeps like moving forward, but it's not really telling you like how much time has passed while they're doing certain things. So in the show, it seems like it's all just happening like every day, whereas it's like happening over several months. Mm -hmm. So that kind of bothers me, but I get it because like, what are they going to do? Like timestamp every single, you know, scene. Right. Um, but that's one thing I would say, like if you haven't read the books you don't like because in my mind when i'm watching the show i know everything that happens so my mind is without me having to do it it's filling in the gaps mm -hmm. and it's understanding like oh they're in bohemia now that happened after they were in london for six months you know like so but 
the viewer, it looks like they, it was like over the course of a week. Yeah. Or when they have a certain relationship with somebody on screen, it looks like it was like, well, they just met that person. Well, I know they've been there for six months. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. that's one thing I would say with shows like that, it's hard to keep everybody in the loop. Like Witcher, for instance, I had to have Laura explain everything to me, like every single episode, because I was like, I don't know what's happening. And Mm -hmm. because you had read the books, and for some people who played the video game, they totally understand it way more. Um, Mm -hmm. But when I was watching it, I was like, wait, so is this in the future or is this in the past? Or Mm -hmm. I didn't know we were time jumping. So I think some shows just assume that everyone's read the material. Yeah. (laughs) So, but, but beside that, I feel like they did a nice job. I feel like everyone's really good. The only crappy thing that I would say too happened is that the character or the actor who plays Baldwin changes in the final season. So you're just, all of a sudden you see this person and you're like, who the hell is that? And then you realize it's Baldwin and you're like, Mm -hmm. oh, I like the other guy. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but you get used to them by the end of this that season but it's just it's weird because you're like who is this blonde guy mm-hmm. he's not supposed to be here who is he and then you're and then mm-hmm. they refer to him as baldwin and you're like oh well that stinks and he's the <laughs> only one that is changed oh. so yeah so i don't know who happened to the actor at who, well, if anything happened to the actual actor but he must have had something else but mm-hmm. yeah Yes. Yeah. Laura, would you recommend what your books? Yes. I am working on the second one very, very slowly. It's been my giant stack of, I started this one time and I'm going to finish it eventually, but haven't yet piles. Um, But yeah, the first season is pretty much the first book. If you read it and the chronological order sort of, there's like several orders you can read the books in. It's the last wish. That's the that's what I started reading like that order with, and that's the first season pretty much is the last wish. Wish, excuse me. So I would start there. But cool. yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. Okay, well, let's pause there with our chitty chat. <laughs> let's jump into another sprint. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's pretend it's nine thirty, and go to the. 55 before we go how do you feel about what your series is how i felt mm. about game of thrones i watched the first episode of that series three times i was so confused yeah, yeah i have not watched game of thrones um it's, i don't like gory stuff and that seemed like in every episode someone was getting their head cut off or something so mm-hmm. yeah i have not watched that show i've heard good things I actually just, I had the first book and I actually just unhauled it because I'm like, I'm never going to read this. Like, it's just not my thing. Um, But yeah, I could see, I could see how that can be confusing if you didn't read the books. And I think Wheel of Time is uh, similar to that. I have not watched the show. I I read the first book and I was reading it so I could watch the show. Um, And because obviously it's one of those books that, you know, you really, depending on your interest, should read. Um, but I probably won't continue on with it. It's not really my cup of tea. And I heard that you had to read like the first two books because it covers like the, like information from both books. And I, I just think that's so weird. I think a book, especially like you can get it done in a series quite well. Like for instance, look at the BBC miniseries Pride and Prejudice. That's one book. That's one Mm -hmm. small book. And you, and they do a phenomenal job of covering it over a mini series. I don't miss mm-hmm. anything. Like, can't we do that for books? Why do we have to have these, you know, little movies that hardly touch anything, you know? Ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Ridiculous. Anywho, again, here's my chitty chat. So we'll <laughs> come back at the 55 and see how everyone's doing on their productivity. See you then. Yep.
Okay, do okay, okay. So before we get into anything, I will say I probably am going to be done after we chat here because sure, it's like a hundred degrees in this room because <laughs> I'm upstairs and all like the fans and the air conditioners are downstairs and it was like in the nineties today here. Mm -hmm. So I'm like really warm. So I'm like sweating and I'm sitting on the floor. So I'm a 37 year old woman <laughs> who <laughs> recently had a baby. I'm sitting on the floor. So everything hurts. <laughs> So I'm just very uncomfortable. So I think I'm going to call it a night um, sure. after we finish up chatting here. But um, yeah, so I'm at, I think I it said 22%. So I'm in chapter six. Um, and again, like, I feel like a lot of people will probably DNF this book. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a lot of just like historical information being spewed at you i think she's finally in, in us in the space where something will happen but again i like i'm half listening because it's like nothing's really happening so i can kind of just space it i hope i'm not missing anything but that's how i kind of feel like i'm just kind of like half listening to it mm -hmm. and scrolling through facebook because that's what i just did <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, Andy had mentioned Mary, one of the characters, she's not the main character, but one of the characters yeah. super annoying. Yes. She is very nice. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, she's reading the spy mistress. Yes. Making you nod off. Yes. It's very, and for some reason I thought it was going to be dual timeline. So like I keep waiting for like the chapter to change to a different perspective or something. Mm. And it's not, No, it's just like, keeps going yep. and going and going. So yeah. yes. no, it'll be interesting to see if anyone finishes this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if we're getting a storm in our area. I hope so. So it can cut this heat down because it, I mean, the last couple of days, it was like high 90s, and then it came down just a little bit. But like this morning at like 5.30 in the morning, it was so humid outside. Like it was, I was like, great, it's another nasty day. Mm -hmm. I usually like to take the kids for a walk, and I just, it's too humid. It's, it's mm -hmm. just, I can't. So, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. What's the main what's the main character's name? Is that Lizzie? Eliza? No, um, um Lizzie is the main character. Lizzie. Isn't yes. her friend Eliza? Yeah, her friend is Eliza. Know. Maybe, yeah. It's all mushed together for me. How far did you get? Um, well in self portrait I got uh to chapter five, so I got 36 pages read. And that started in 1958 when she was standing on the ledge of the apartment building. And that jumped back 20 years to 1938 when she was discovered. So it talks about how she got discovered and her relationship with Howard Hughes. So I got that. And then this, I got to, I just got to chapter four. So I am 30, sorry, 44 pages in. Um, and yeah, it's just, it just sort of drops you in and then it just sort of keeps going at the same rate. Like it's just, you just drop in this woman's daily life as things change and it's fine, but I, um, I don't know. I know I was kind of expecting a little bit of like pink carnation. Yeah, a little bit. And I thought it would, it would cover this topic, like still how things changed and went back and forth and it was really unsure. I thought it would cover it in like a couple of paragraphs and it would like fast forward you for lack of a better term to when our main character kind of becomes a spy, not all right. this really Cut. linear dragged out thing. So I don't know. Right. So, I mean, I'm almost to a fourth of the book done and I'm like, nothing yeah. is happening. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know. 
Uh, sorry about that. That was, you were talking about this Andy, not Andy. Name's all the same to me tonight. I think it's because I'm tired now. But search for significance. Um, yeah, it is just very, it's like very flat line. Mm -hmm. It's that I'm in now. I'm like, okay, here we go. Here's, maybe we're going to see something now, but it's taking a long time. And yeah. I'm like, out when I'm listening to it because nothing's really happening. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, we'll see. I'll keep mm -hmm. reading. I probably won't DNF. I try not to DNF for the book club so that we can have at least one person that's read it. Yeah. So we get a good definitive answer. Um, what was it rated on Goodreads? I have no idea. Let me look it up real quick. Oh, excuse me. I hit a wall. Good reads. And my books. Three point six six. So that's not terrible. Yeah. I think the last book I read set in the Civil War was Cold Mountain, and that was excellent. I really loved that book. That was that a movie too, wasn't it? Yeah, it just sucked me right in. Like, I didn't read the follow-up yet. I want to eventually, but that was so good. And I've read a lot of nonfiction, like bits here and there, not like whole books about it necessarily, but I've always been interested in it. But this is not, it's not doing it for me so far. It's not bad. It's just sort of, meh. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever read Civil War. Mm. Read Badge of Courage, but that's different. That's a different kind of civil war. Yeah. I don't know that I've ever read any other historical fictions that were in the Civil War. Obviously, you know, World War II trumps the entire genre. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, which I try to stay away from that, but a lot of times you just sucked into it and you're like, mm -hmm. oh wow. I didn't realize I could read another historical fiction set in World War II. Mm -hmm. What's surprising to me is like the volume of books being published even right now after all these years of such a high volume of World War II historical fiction. Like it's still new stuff is coming it's out. I'm like huge. this is amazing. People love it though. Yeah, it's amazing to it, me. I, I think it's great. I mean, that's totally fine. But I'm just sort of shocked. Like wow, it's still going. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's as if there was there have been no other wars. Right. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, Jeeves. I have not read any of those, but I've heard very good things. Me either. Did not start. Oh, nice. Good. Steinbeck's a, a really good writer. He's hit or miss for me as, as far as books that I've read with him, but usually the, the hits are hits. So I know you've been enjoying a lot of his, his writing. Is that um, a chunky one or a little one, Cup of Gold? I'm not familiar with that title. This, his stuff tends to be like 100 pages or 600, it seems like. You know, like there's right. not a lot of It's between. usually like a tome or yeah, like a pamphlet. There's three pieces of paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, do you have anything else that you want to chat about this evening? Otherwise, like I said, I think I'm going to call it a night. I'm really sorry. I know we tried to go a little bit longer with these, but it is getting a little bit late. And my back is like, if anyone saw me read, like, I'm just sitting here yeah. like, oh, my gosh. Like, I need to get off this floor. Mm -hmm. Oh, Andy. The Red Pony. So I read that book when I was in seventh grade. And I still cannot get the bloody egg scene out of my head. Like I think about that all the time. Like anytime I'm making eggs, I think of that, that book, <laughs> but that was a really good book. I Steinbeck does, like I said, he has a, 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 a couple of really good hits. Um, but yeah, it's good. It's one of my, my favorites. I should reread that. I have it in the other room. I should reread it. I never read that one. It's it's decent. 
I mean, it's Steinbeck, so you know what to expect as far as like just landscape being, you know, mid America. Yeah. The only one I read was East Eden when we read that for that group a couple of years ago. That's the only one I've ever read. So, Grapes of Wrath. Grapes of Wrath, that's the one. I always said those and two. East of Eden, both of them. I don't think I read East of Eden. Out. Yay! Grapes of Wrath. Yay! Uh oh, I think we're frozen. Yes, Andy. No, seriously, it's a real, it's a real issue. Seriously. Uh, yeah, maybe. We have to. We read Steinbeck with um, Emily from Novel Novels, and then. Um, yeah, I never read that. I said I was going to, and I never did. <laughs> I think I bought a copy. I started reading, and I was like, nope. And I stopped. What? What's that? Um, Grapes of Wrath with Emily and Ange. Oh, did you not read that with us? No, I joined in, but I just never got page past page, I think, 20 or something. Oh, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. I just remember <laughs> every time. So we we uh, communicated through Voxer. Every time someone came on, we were like, I hate this book. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> Why is this like this? <laughs> Every time it's so funny. But but we started with East of Eden and we were so blown away and loved it that it was like we were expecting the same thing in Grapes of Wrath. And then Grapes of Wrath was just a total like depressing pile of crap. <laughs> <laughs> but like I get it, like I get why it's mm -hmm. such a prolific novel but like no thank you i'm good mm -hmm. so okay folks so i think that's a wrap i think we're yeah. gonna call it a night i'm gonna go and get off my floor and see if i can't um find a more comfortable space to be in mm -hmm. uh but next time you'll see us on september 26th for a live discussion of spy mistress Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be dropping our new products um, tomorrow morning and voting for our October book will be announced on the 26th. So you have the till the 25th to vote that is already up on our community tab. So feel free to jump over there anytime. Awesome. And vote on those. And other than that, I think, I think we're all good. Yeah. Oh, Angie, East of Eden's good. Yeah. Best female villain ever of <laughs> all time. Ever. Like, she's the best, worst person ever. <laughs> ever. 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 <laughs> Okay, friends, we all, we love you all very, very much. And we thank you so much for being here with us. Can't wait until yeah. we see you again. Um, but until that time, we hope you are reading something great. Mm -hmm. you, Laura. Nope. Thanks for coming and hanging out with us. Nice to see everybody. Bye. Bye, friends. <laughs>